Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Let me just adjust everything real quick. Should be fine. Uh, sorry about the leg right here. Can't really do much about it without being too zoomed in. And then it's gonna get... We can go about that far. Alright, so today I'm gonna be talking about why I dislike iPod Nanos. Um... It's kind of a big topic, uh, <laughs> there's a huge thing on the Discord that we all go through about don't get an iPod Nano, don't get it, it looks cool, but don't get it, it's kind of stuff like that, and today I'm going to be talking about why I dislike them in the first place. Um, one, it's because, um, we'll start off, I have five real reasons, but, um, start off with, um, modability. So, I, you guys know by now, hopefully, if you've been watching these videos long enough, you know that my daily driver is, sorry, that guy. This is my daily driver. This is what I use for my music every single day. And I love the thing. It's awesome. Um, uh, Elite Obsolete Electronics built it for me, actually. And it's wonderful. I mean, it has 128 gig storage, which I know is m more than most of people's phones now. Um, which is just incredible. And I love the thing. But this is my daily driver. And if I ever have a part that goes wrong into it, I can take it apart and put a new part in it. Or send it off to the guy I bought it from. He can take it apart because I have a warranty on it. And he can replace the parts that are necessary to replace. The screen can be replaced. The battery can be replaced. Which is up here. The whole dock and or the headphone jack and your switch can be replaced. Your click wheel, your motherboard, basically your storage, your hard drive, whatever can be replaced in here. And you can put a clear faceplate, whatever you want on here. These guys you can't. Um, seventh gens, this is, so this is a first gen nano. Um, seventh gen nano, so first guy, first nano ever made, last nano ever made. The seventh gen nano, you can replace the battery, but that's really about it. Uh, first gen nanos, you can't do anything with. So, um, since you can't upgrade the storage, so whatever the storage amount, like this guy only has four gigs, which was common with the first ones, you can't do anything with that four gigs. It is soldered to the board, you cannot put 128 gigs into it. You can't even put another 8 gigs or anything. You can't really do that type of stuff with this iPod. The same with this guy. It's With these Nanos, they are so incredibly thin comparatively to this guy. I mean, these are stupid thin. And, like, just look at this. Like, this is around the thickness of my phone or a little thinner than my phone with my case on. Okay? This thing is, like, thinner than my phone completely. Without the case on. And they are built so tight and so compact in these devices that there's no room for error, basically. You have to, um create everything so tightly in here that you can't really do anything with these. There's no hard drive in them like the minis that I showed y'all in the second video I did. Um, there is, there's no way to mod these. I mean, yes you can buy the chips that these use and get um, bigger chips that are the same, but you have to be very comfortable with soldering, and yet at that, you have to be very comfortable with going down to that level, because it is so small in there. Like, you see guys, you see this chip right here? We'll try and zoom into it. Ah, 
stupid camera. There. You see this guy right here? I can't zoom in much farther, but... That guy right there is the DAC. Um, sorry on the last thumbnail. I, it's not D-A-Q, it's D-A-C, digital -log, digital to analog converter. Um, but that's the DAC in here. Yeah, that's the DAC. It is so small in here that it doesn't, it just looks like another chip on here. That's, there. with these iPods, they got everything so small and so tightly fitting that it's just incredible piece of engineering and that's what these guys are incredible because like this guy is around the thickness of the 6s no not 6s the 6 which was people make fun of because it was so thin and so it wasn't durable enough that these they actually bent the phones did but this guy's the same thickness as that and can't bend it but, um, don't worry about this. This is just a vinyl skin I put on the back because the back is so beat up. And yet, this guy is even thinner yet. <laughs> and that's where my next point comes in. So the first point was, you cannot mod these. You can't really do anything with these guys. Second point is that, especially with the 7th gen, they got it so thin that if it takes a fall, like mine did, it will ding up very easily. And especially with these guys, you have to be careful because if it hits the headphone jack um, guy right there, it will bend the exterior in. And it, with, um, I had um, my dad, he actually took some tools and bent this out because you couldn't even stick a headphone jack in it. Yes, I had Bluetooth headphones, but they suck. They were crap. But I had better earbuds that would go in here, but it can't do that. And yes, it has a lightning connector on it, but that doesn't mean it has compatibility with audio. I have a pair of lightning earbuds, and I plugged them in here, and they will not play through them. You have to use this guy. Um, and it's just so thin that it can ding up and it can actually damage it. Like, we'll see if this guy has any juice left. Uh, it does, surprisingly. Don't die on me. Um, but you can kind of see some stuff on the screen here. If I go in here, you can see there are bunches of lines all across it and that's because I dropped it once off of a bunk bed that I had when I was younger once and that did all this screen damage and the headphone jack bent in X here wise put you back to sleep because I, I mean yes it's still usable it has 16 gigs on it I use it every now and then because it has Bluetooth on it and it works with AirPod and AirPod Pros but it's just that these are so thin and everything that they are very fragile. And here's my next point. Yes, you can't mod them. That's, uh, okay, that's kind of not that big of a deal with iPods. Well, yes it is, and no it isn't. I mean, your first, second, and third gen iPod classics, you can not even really mod them. Be beyond the point that they were rated for storage because like I don't um, Think the second gen could only go up to 20 gigs so you could put a 16 gig SD card in there and it would be fine Otherwise you cannot you cannot go above 20 gigs. So they were very little Possibilities in modding those early iPods compared to your fifth gen your sixth gen and your seventh gen um and that's just, a lot of people are like, it's not that great of a thing. And it's just not a fun time when you're wanting to mod something and you get one thinking you can, but you can't. But back to repairability on this guy. You can't replace crap on here. 
really. The 7th gen, yes, you can replace your battery. This guy, um, your 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, and I believe 6th generations. So, 6 out of the 7 generations, you can't do anything to this guy unless you are comfortable with soldering. Because you have, these are, the batteries in here are soldered to the motherboard. So you have to take this apart, which is a nightmare because it's like the 5th, or not 5th, the 6th and 7th gens, they have the same clips and everything. I've tried, I've actually bent the case out a little bit um, on my first gen. And once you get in there, unlike the 6th or 7th gen, there's so much to do in those classics. But with the nanos, you have to desolder your batteries and that's it. That's all you really can do. The displays are soldered on to there, I believe. Um, this is just a huge major project for people who really want to spend the hours at a time to get back up and running to its brand new condition. Now, um, so th this guy has the line here. You saw all the lines on here. Nanos are notorious with what we like to call in the iPod community the black spot. The black spot is where the battery is commonly located behind the display. So your battery's right in here. They're little guys, but I, like I said earlier, these guys are so tightly condensed and so tightly packed in here, all the components, that there was no wiggle room in these guys. Unlike the classics, there's little room for the battery to expand inside the device. And that's why you don't get what's called the black spot with these classics because there's room for the battery to get bigger as it gets used. These guys, that's not the case. They are so packed in there that if the battery expands, it's going to push up on the um, screen and it's going to get worse and worse. Um, I've seen a lot of lot of second, fourth, fifth, um, gens, so three generations, and I believe the first gens, I don't know, I haven't seen one of these guys do it, but it's more common with the second, fourth, and fifth gens. It gets dangerous, because, like, the second gen, I've seen ones where it's no longer the flat back, it is bulging out because the battery is pushing out on it. I had a 4S that I pulled out of a garage, and I w was scared to touch it because the battery had expanded so much that it pushed both the screen out of its place and the back panel of glass out. I just tossed that back out and don't deal with it anymore. Um, so that's um, why I don't work. Now, the iPods I do like, or this guy, I don't really care for the 6th gens because it's basically like a first time Apple Watch. I have an Apple Watch and uh, I love the thing, but just a music device and you have to plug headphones into it on your wrist, that can get kind of annoying. Now the one iPod that I am probably, hopefully going to get soon is a 3rd generation Nano. Um, they have... They can get the black spot, but they're less known um, for getting them. And, um, but the reason I like the third gens is because it's like the uh, sixth gens or seventh gens where it's metal front casing. It's like a miniature version of that with the same screen to uh, pixel density and all that type of stuff. But, like, the iPod Nanos are just a weird device in the iPod community. Like, yes, they're amazing for portability and all that. Yes, they're smaller than your classics, um, especially the 20 gig, um, second gen. Those things are, no, it was 10 gig, second gen. Um, anyways, um, those things are huge, and it's just, those things, you have capabilities to mod them. E like, if you want a small iPod, I would recommend going with a Mini. Because a Mini, you can still mod. Yes, it's 
A Mini is essentially a bigger version of a second generation Nano, but it has a monochrome display. Um, and that's just, that's okay, because that's better than using one of these, and you can replace the batteries without having to desolder and solder. With those, you just have to be comfortable with taking electronics apart. Um, and it's just, the Nanos are a weird tier of iPods, in my opinion. I, I don't really care for them because they have so many issues and they're not moddable. That's kind of why I got into doing the iPod community, get, getting into the iPod community was because I could mod them. Uh, a similar situation with the iPod Touches, um, you can't mod those, um, that's just life, essentially, those devices are much newer, and they are kind of less fun in a way, um, compared to doing other stuff, sorry, um, but that is today's video. Thank you for watching, and next week I will be talking about the touches. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for next week.